Okay, when we're making forecasts, one thing that we really want to examine is the error. And this is just like when we were doing regression analysis where we had a predicted value uh, versus the actual value and we called the, the difference a residual, an error. Well, the same thing here with forecast. Forecasting, we want to certainly be able to see how accurate our forecast is. Now it says use the naive method most recent values. So what that means is I would start one over and copy. So the forecast for week two would be based on the actual value of week one. And I can copy this straight across and you will see um, all we're doing then the forecast for week three would be based on what actually happened in week two and so on. All right, so now from here, we'd like to know the forecast error, which is the actual value minus the forecast. So I'm going to take the actual value minus the forecast. And of course I can see five under and then go straight across. All right, so, and I can total this because I'm gonna, in fact, just copy this formula here in a minute. And from here now, I have some different measurements of error. So I have mean absolute error, mean squared error, and both of these, which should be kind of the key of why we like to use them is we don't deal with plus and minuses. We just deal straight away with, well, let's get the absolute value, okay, mean absolute error, and then by squaring them as well um, to see how much error, overall error we actually have. So the mean absolute is, notice here that um, that's what we're trying to do is get rid of this whole deal of positive and negatives. So what we do is we can take the absolute value, and Excel has the ABS for absolute value, and click on my forecast error. So I'm just taking that absolute value of each one of these, and then because I did me a total formula, I'm gonna sum those, and to get the mean the average mean absolute, I would take this value and divide by the number of values, one, two, three, four, five, and divide by five, and that would give my mean absolute error. I can do the same thing with the mean squared error. So as you can guess, I'm going to take each one of these and square them, copy that straight across, can copy my sum formula and then my average, my mean formula. So I get my mean squared error. And then the absolute, uh, the mean absolute percent is what you think the percent difference. Okay, so the actual percentage difference is found by um, take what your error was, your forecasting error by that particular week and then divide by the actual value for that week. Okay, so my error, because I want my percentage error, divided by the actual value. And if you don't have your cells set up, I pre ahead of time had them set up, you'll probably get negative 0.3571. Just click the percent button on the a toolbar up here or multiply it by 100%. Copy this straight across. And then in this case, notice here, I need to be careful because this is the mean absolute percent error. So I could either do another row or what might have been easiest to do is just absolute value my answer. And so now if I absolute value this, I only need one row and I copy this and I get, notice these aren't formatted correctly. So I wanna put them as a percentage. And so my total, the 106.67%, 
but then my mean absolute percent error would be 21.33%. And then they ask you to forecast week seven. Well, the only thing you can do to forecast week seven is just simply take the value before. And so I would have 14. So this is going to get you started, okay, with the different types of errors that we have in forecasting. And then we'll try to go through and figure out, well, how do you know which, what is the worst error, which one to actually, you know, report to your boss.